Okay. Uh, call the meeting to order at 638. Do we have any additions? Yes? Is Do you have a legal matter? Sandra's circle and some of the stuff you sent out today. Should that be on the agenda that's not printed? Um, so I have an item. Yeah, um, we okay. could add a decision for plan B as a, okay. an addition. Some of the stuff that she sent out today. Yeah. And also I have an RFP draft for Town Hill project that yeah. we're possible to decide uh, for the due dates for bids. Road stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, review of minutes to 17. Here we go. Yeah. Zoe's, Zoe's name is listed twice. I don't think it's a clone it or, or a. Oh. Is Zoe Zoe? I don't. I think only one of. I think only one of her was here. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. That's a typo, I believe. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 No, no, no discussion. Um, sure. I'm actually making a motion <laughs> oh. with, with that with that small. Oh. Is there is there further discussion? Yeah, and I'll make that I'll make my motion with the, the small change. As amended. Yes. Thank you. Is there further discussion? I don't have any. Okay. Just all the favor, please say aye. 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 We'll say it again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, public comment. I see a lot of people in here. Are you public or no? No. Good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get quick for you. Uh, oh, really? No. Um, so ZA interview is off because he's sick. Right. And did he respond? So to... he said possibly next week for a special meeting if you wanted to do reschedule then. Hmm. How, how time sensitive is this? Is this well, it is kind of sensitive yeah. because we don't have one. We don't have, and we were just gonna go ahead and hire him because we'd already talked about it, but I really hate to hire somebody without. At least like to meet Face him. to face. We have to do due diligence. <laughs> that's what I thought. So that's why I okay. kind of pushed the interview. <sighs> is background check and everything been done on this guy so we don't have to? We haven't done that yet. We haven't done the background check, but... Um, we came up with an offer letter. No, I that. saw that, but I right. just wondered if the right. background check was, was done. No. Has he signed an application so we can do that? No. I'll refrain from comment then. <laughs> you did apply, though. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to sign and give permission for the background yeah, check. Yeah, you do. Well, was that part of the packet that he um, did? We just is. set up the interview, um, so he okay. came recommended. Okay. And okay. I'm just thinking about speeding up the process by having a meeting sooner than later. I do have to do it first thing in the morning, actually, then at night, because my nights stretch into the night <clears throat> in the morning. But you guys are probably on free in the morning, or what? Depends on the day. Yeah, it depends on the day. For me too. We can do it early enough. I mean, yeah. So I've been substituted a little bit, but I'm happy to do it. Oh, you're still subbing? Yeah, just at the camp. Some, what time does that start? Nine or something? Some days nine, some days ten. But I can be flexible something. Early. This office is right open till. Right I mean, right I I wouldn't mind doing it at eight o'clock in the morning. We could do it at eight. I could do it. Huh? I could do it at eight. I'm definitely on board with that. Yep, I could do it eight at eight on on Monday. If he could do it then. Okay. Why don't you just let us know? Okay. And if he's still sick, I don't know. Whatever, but. Then we also can do it virtually too. If, yeah. like, if, like, if Carl, who's in the Midwest, if he wanted to be online. Yeah. I can, I'll be here physically. I'll be here, here physically. Yeah, I'll be here. All right, see, see, what the, see what it is. Okay. Just see what we can do. And if that doesn't work, there's other mornings that we can do it, right? Or yeah. we can just talk, talk about it. Sure. Okay. Good. Uh, so that takes care of that. Uh, discussion on Town Garage. Do we have all the people here that are going to discuss Town Garage? This is a little early. But Guthrie, I think, was going to tune in. 
So, what's that? Are the other two select board members going to be here? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, we could discuss some other things. Uh, town treasurer, we could just get a few things out of the way because I think Guthrie's going to tune in, tune in. Pretty sure. And any girls are supposed to be here. And yeah, we better okay. we better do a few other things. Yeah. We'll kill out a time till seven. Town treasurer report. You can do that. Yep, that's in the package. Yep. Oh, this is town garage. Oh, here we go. We need to sign off on the um, external auditor yeah. agreement. Yeah. So it went up, went up to, what is it, it go up? Um, did go up. Oh yeah, 1800 bucks about. So if we're happy with this, we need a motion. Make a motion that we hire Sullivan and Powers from the agreed on fee. Okay. This this is a this is a full audit. Yeah, we have it every year. Yeah. Oh, every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's just gone up about eighteen hundred bucks approximately. Do we ever not need a full audit and a? Soft audit? I think you're required to do at least a full audit once a year. Yeah, yeah we've been doing it every year. That's easy. I believe. Okay. I don't know. Could, unless they've changed the law. I don't know what the law is, but I just know we've done it every year. Okay. Yeah. And it seems to be a good idea. Especially when you start seeing other towns that haven't had audit in, audits in years and they're having problems. Well, it's mandatory like, that it's we're not there. If it's mandatory that it's definitely a good idea. I don't know if it's mandatory or not. That's, That's what I was always told. Yeah. Because there's different levels of audits. Sure. Vanilla, deep audit, <laughs> whatever. True. <laughs> but let's just go with an audit. But if you, if you have an objection to it, we can uh, shelve it. I don't, it but for future... No, no, I know what you're saying. Right. <clears throat> Sometimes it could be half the price, and if we don't need to... Yeah. Especially if you we have it, a turnover in treasury, I think it's a, it's a really good idea. A really think. good idea to do a full There was problems in the town years and years ago, as you know, <laughs> with money disappearing well, and this and that. So that was a real problem. But if we got a clean audit, then we can at least investigate next year. Well, we've we always had pretty clean audits. Yeah. No, so Since I've been just bringing up the potential. Okay, that's fine. I'm trying to save the taxpayers. You're killing time, too, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the Okay, so, I'm, the so Tom made a motion. I need, I need a second on that. Do you want me to pontificate anymore? <laughs> Not really. Okay, I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion about the audit? No. Now you have time to talk some more? No. no. All those in favor, please say aye. next year. Aye. 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 <laughs> the eyes appear they have it, they do have it. Okay. So we got rid of that. Um, <coughs> very good. How about the motion to appoint the Green Update Coordinator, Christine Schultz, dealing because we lost our Green Up. Uh, this is good that someone came step forward for that. Yeah. Really nice. We need a motion for that. Um, or do you want to pontificate on that? But you can do it when I ask for further discussion. Exactly. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to uh, appoint uh, Kristen Schultz Bailing as the Green Up Day Green Up Day Coordinator. Very good. Second. Any further discussion? Not by me, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> All in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. We got that done. This pen's kind of done. Wow. Um, okay. The next item we should work on. Motion to authorize TA to sign geotechnical investigation agreement with DeWolf. Didn't we already do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we needed a motion. I know. Yeah. But we already signed it because we need to move the thing forward. But we do need a motion. I'll make a motion to sign, to authorize the TA to sign a geotechnical investigation agreement with DeWolf. Second. Any further discussion? Not by me again. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good. 
Um, we still have 12 minutes. Let's consideration of Lister laptop and docking station purchase. This is good. <coughs> so what was the price from RB Technology? We got it right here. Oh, we got it right here. Oh, it's what? Uh, Three thousand. Three thousand eighty-two dollars and forty-three cents. Okay. So that includes the docking station, the laptop, installation services, warranty. Now, with that, do we have the money in our capital fund? Or <coughs> where would that come out of, Swan? Um, so is it? We had a line in there for electronics in the. I thought we had a right in the upper office. But I think we used for computers. Yeah, I think we used a lot of it this year. We did. Uh, so we, we might want to. Well, it's, the, it's a new year now. So. Yeah, covered right. by. Last year we used ARPO funds to. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. On the office equipment, but. So I there, thought there was a line item bill in the budget. There is, in the capital plan. Right. There's a line item for something in the town office. <coughs> is there enough money in it? Yeah, we also have a surplus around yeah. 36K. Yeah, I saw from that. The previous year as well. Yeah, but you can't spend that unless you earmark it before the end of the year and the year just ended. So, I mean, you can put that. Right. Because today's a new fiscal year. You can today it starts. Yeah. Yeah. So you really can't use that money for that, I don't think. You can put it back in the general fund, okay? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we've got the money, basically. All right. But you were pushing back because you said you could do the laptop cheaper. Well, I, I actually I actually looked into this. I okay. Mean, that's I, what's I, great. I, went, I went online and it was. I'm not knocking your effort to save money. Right. I just yeah. I mean, looked. It looked. It's it's not far. We, it looked like it was 1600 and change when I just looked up the configuration. That was without windows, which is probably another 100 bucks or so. Um, I, I'm just questioning whether, um, first of all, whether we have to have with RB for $500 set up and, and whatnot, um, and whether we need a six, whether we need a $2,500 computer rather than a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, we're not, they're not doing graphics on this. How can we do it that much with it? It looks like a really nice, it's 2000, it's, it's actually in the, in the ballpark. I'm just wondering what all the other stuff is. I'm just, the setup, it seems to be, all that. Yeah, plus open source. And who, came, who came up with this? this? The listers came up with this or RB? I understand, but what about oh, the, 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 the request for? So the listers, so they have two workstations, three people, so they wanted a third. No, no. But also want to be able to, uh, on the field. I understand, but uh, my questioning is, do we need this high end of a computer? I, I would like it. Because the one you got the quote on is not as good. No, it is. It's 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 comparable. Same, like, same specs. Yeah. Okay. It, I, it, I looked on up also. Right. It, it is comparable. My question is, can they work with a computer that's half the price that's that would do the capabilities? They're not doing graphics or. Right. They just have to get on Nemrick. It's just that it covers getting the machine unboxed and run through initial setup and deploying on site and getting a user logged in and getting Microsoft Axe license for working. So I, I don't know. Got me. You think who else is going to do that if they don't do it? Or I don't think Ross and. Uh, well, I think Deb's pretty computer late. Well, I'm not sure anybody else is in here. Ross Bailey. I've said my piece a couple of meetings already. No, I'm, I'm fine with it if we want to save money. I'm just saying who's going to do that. The, the, the request is we don't have to beat this to death and we can start, but. No, that's okay. We've got eight more minutes to beat to death. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners are asking for, for this stuff. I know. I'm questioning whether. Yeah, I get it. I'm just saying who's going to do it. We, we could buy two or three computers if they break for the price of. Yeah. 
but I'm happy to give RV the, the, the business, but yeah, I never need to take this in for repair. Okay. So who's going to set it up for them? You need to set it up. I don't. I, have I set no up idea. my own. I set I up my own computer. This, I'm an idiot. My, I'm an idiot, and I can set up my own. I was able to set up my own computer. Okay, well you've got. As long as they have the never software license, they should be able to set it up. What do you think? I mean, I would say, I think we should get the laptop, and then yeah. we have the the support, the IT support that we need. Yeah. But right. it's up to you guys. No, but I, you're in here all the time. Yeah. We are not. So if you think you're better off to go to the RB Technology Store, yeah, you know, it is a little more money, but you've got the support if we need it. I understand. And I don't think they're going to appreciate us going outside the box to buy something because we want to save a few bucks. Do they need a $2,000 computer or could it be a $1,000 computer? Yeah. I, okay, let's, I, just, I really don't let's just bring this to a vote. Yeah. Let's. Uh, we need a motion. So if, <laughs> if you guys don't want to make a motion, then just get shot. I think we need to buy a computer, but I'm not convinced we need a three thousand okay. dollar computer. All right, we won't do it then. Um, Doesn't make much difference to me. I'm not in the office having to deal with it. I think they should have a laptop. They I don't think we're disagreeing with that. Yeah. Okay. So we've got that established. Great. But if you guys think we can save money and it's all going to work out, like I don't know. something different. Yeah. I haven't seen the justification for. Like I said, do they have the Nemeric license so that they can add that computer without any technical issues? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Do they have the disk to do that? Or is that something RB Tech has got? Usually RB Tech handles all that, getting them on the network, Nemeric. Yes, right. And if there's any issues. Right. I mean, well, I don't know. I hate to put it off any longer because it's I good. do too. I it's, think you should just go with it. I'll make a motion that we accept the bid this time for RB Tech, but in the future, I think we need to investigate the... Well, the problem is that we're tied into RB Tech. We give us great service. I realize that it's, we're spending a little bit more money than if we went out and bought something off the shelf, but you've got their support and they're right here. Right. That's, that's the deal. Right. And I know it costs some money. And, cause, and if this is a, could be a $1,000 computer from RV, not a $2,000 computer. That's right. Oh, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Right. That's what he's saying. And I don't, yeah. feel, uh, and I don't feel guilty. They're, they're our neighbors. They yeah. pay taxes. Right. They put a whole system in here. I mean, we can ask they, them that. If they've they made, yeah. we've, we've contributed to their debt, right. to their bottom line. I don't feel guilty. Yeah, okay. Because we, so, we're, we, we're not going to anybody. If you just want to put it off and say, can you give us a cheaper he made the yeah. He made the motion. He made a motion. I made the motion. Okay, we need a second. I can second it. I'll second it. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those against, please say Okay. <laughs> Two to one. No, that minute. We, noted the, minute, noted the minutes that I'd like to, in the future, see justification for gotcha. the computer configuration, and we haven't seen any. All right. Sounds good. Okay, I think we can move ahead with the um, town garage discussion, because I think everyone's here. Is that correct? I think Guthrie is not Guthrie. Oh, Guthrie hasn't tuned in. Can we call him? Yes, sir. I talked to him this morning. He said he was going to be Can we call him and just double check and see if he's no, going to be here or wait? Uh, it is four minutes before the discussion. So. What's that? You got four minutes. Yeah, we, well, we can do something else. He's How about doing the warrants? Right. Let's kill a little time. Yeah, I've got a copy. Here, you look at it first, and I'll text him right now. Yeah, because he's not going to come. Yeah. Should, it's uh, three minutes away. He's usually... Yeah, yeah I mean, he said he had some other stuff to do. Well, okay. well, let me just text him. Sure. Sure. He's usually pretty much Okay, awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Don't have hurry. Okay. Thank you. They all have yeah. copies. We have... We got copies of Yep. Yeah. Okay. This, this is a prettier copy, though. Yeah, a boldly, a boldly colors. <laughs> I, I understand this thing completely. Right? A little bit bigger. Oh, thank you. That's Andy. Andy right it's, 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 it's like Andy. this, right? Yeah. Do, you guys want, do you guys want this? Uh, no, I'm, I'm uh, pretty good with that. Uh, Andy's going to want that. So. Andy, yeah, go grab one. Okay. Andy's that bar chart. Two more pages. Okay. 
Did you, did you look at these? I, I, I studied everything I wanted. Did you? 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 Did
So this will be, this will sit on the site such that this, uh, this being the main road, um, this is viewed from the west side looking. Hamilton Road for yeah, yeah. Yep. Correct. Yep. Yep. This is viewed from the west side um, looking towards the east. Um, and this is the office administrative portion. You'd still enter the site from up here and there would still be a means off the other side of the yard down by the uh, fire department. So the, uh, so all, the, all the doors are on the north side. The north side. All the doors are on the north side. They're also all facing the yard. Um, the existing public works garage is literally right here. Yeah, it's facing so it's, the garage. So it's going to be in close proximity to that while they're building this facility. Um, and then it'll be torn down. Um, so a couple advantages of this. Um, it provides good screening of the yard and the facilities and the equipment and such from the main road. It provides good vehicular access on this side, along with a good visibility of people coming onto the site and the yard from the office administrative space, as well as from the garage itself. Um, all the water on the roof, it's a shed, single, single slope shed roof, and it will fall off to the south side of the building. Uh, that allows the doors and this side of the building to be a little bit higher. Uh, providing a little bit more clearance space for their vehicles. Um, there is no, this is all the office administrative space. So there's office, uh, toilet and shower facilities, a break room, and then mechanical room. Uh, and we'll talk to you about what the mechanical equipment is when we get further into the conversation. Um, and because when we were looking at this, we we're looking at options. Because the building, um, this type of building has to be compartmentalized if it's non-sprinklered. There was a strong desire to maintain an open, continuous open facility with good visibility from the office area, from anywhere in the, in the building, uh, and thus required fire protection system. Uh, so in order to do that, we had to do storage tanks and a fire pump uh, to support that suppression, fire suppression system, and that's included here. And we're trying to gain other efficiencies by using that reservoir of water for thermal storage as well for the building. So we're trying to use it in another way that will support uh, its, its cost. Um, How close is that to the salt shed, that end? The this, salt shed's over there, right? The salt shed is over here. It's got to be. Go ahead. Well, more up past the shoulder. Yeah. It's right. setback. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's the whole width of the whole shed. Yeah. Okay. This is actually going to be pretty close up to the road. Yeah. So, um, you, so yeah. the salt shed is offset yeah. to the side? To the up. Yeah. So up you, here, you yeah. have room to drive in between? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, so so there is now. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the current sand pile is really right about here, yeah. right, right yeah. now. Yeah. But that'll have to be removed in order to build this, so they're going to relocate that. Okay. The well will have to be redone because yeah. that's... That's covering the well. Yeah. That's is. covering the well. It is not covering it, but it's, it's got to be like right here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So this... And what's the pitch on that shed roof? I think it's 3 and 12. I can't remember. Oh, it's, it's a fairly shallow Pretty pitch. Pretty shallow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there'd probably be a double lock seam on the stain. Would have to, yeah. 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 Uh, is that a stainy seam? It is, yes. Okay. And like I said, this is the view from Templeton Road. This would kind of be the back yeah. area uh, depicted. I don't have these electronically, but I can send them to Jennifer electronically if you'd like to have a PDF of them. Um, that would be fine. Um, so now is this wood or steel? Or well, that's, we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, this can be built in wood or steel to this configuration. If it were wood, it would be wood framed all the way around and just the steel columns down the center. Do you have a carrying beam down to the bend? Yeah, yeah. yeah. you need to for that span. You would, yeah. Yeah. especially because the roof is pretty high. Exactly. The catch of that, it's not really a catch, it's actually a pro, is the supporting beams for that carrier. Yeah. We utilize, so it would have 
air on water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And they would be spaced how far apart? 20 feet or 20 feet? They are 22 feet on center. Okay. This one has a hose bib and compressed air. Yeah. This will have power and sensors. Uh, okay. They alternate. So 22 feet on center. 22 feet on center, yeah. Carrying beam. And then, okay, so how deep is the building? The main. It part is of it? 66 feet in total. The office area is a little bit truncated, a little yeah, shorter. Yeah. yeah. Um, they also have a door that exits out this way towards the road um, leading out by the fire department, the existing fire department. So there's okay, actually. That's a garage door? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That we consider that a greater bay. That's six, a greater. 16 by 16 door. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And that, so that, that rectangular thing is just the to show that's a bay. Footprint of the great. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, these, these are all the footprints yeah. of the building. The cross hatched area is kind of the zone around okay. the physical action, the yeah. actual vehicle. What size the actual vehicle is? Yeah. yeah. So in between, you know, here and here, is this a wall? No, nope, it's no. completely open. Completely open. So it's 66 feet from here to here? Nope. Correct. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 So you have the carrying beam and then you have a truss. Yep. Yeah. So it's either, we can either do That's a three engineered cool. metal building or we can do a wood frame building with an open cord wood truss. Okay. Uh, yep. with, with a carrying beam down the center. Yeah. Um, so we were looking at that. For a number of reasons, um, the, the steel building is a little bit more expensive than a wood building. Uh, a wood building is thermally easier to build from an energy standpoint, energy yeah. saving standpoint in the long run. Um, and what was the other one? I was the other one is the embodied carbon. The embodied carbon, yeah. The embodied carbon in the steel building is double what yeah. it is. In just the materials, the steel building has about five and a half million pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. Yeah. And the wood building that, um, I'm sorry, I got the wrong one. The embodied emissions, it's 600,000 pounds for the steel building and 300 for the wood building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the concrete un unfortunately contributes to both of them. But right. yeah. Well, you have to have the same. Concrete. You have to have the same yeah. concrete. Yeah, yeah. So. Concrete's the same on each yeah. one. And yeah, you yeah. figure a four foot stem wall of concrete. What is it? What's the wall for the concrete? Four foot stem above the floor. Correct. Yeah, oh, four feet above the floor. So yeah, we're coming up above for. So you have to have at least an eight foot wall. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Frost wall. Frost, frost wall plus that four inch. Right. 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 But that'll give them the durability and the ability yeah. to clean. And it's way better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Way better. If you bump the wall, it's going to protect the building. Way better. Yeah. Way better. Yep. Yeah. 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 We're all in agreement. Yeah. Um, we've laid out some of their equipment needs here. Still can refine that as we continue to go, but I think we've hit everything. Um, and then this is actually, we have this in a depressed zone because the site starts to fall off in that area. So we actually depress that area down to put the tanks. So the tanks are sitting up about four or five feet above the finished floor, but they're actually down in a pit. Um, so I, so um, in that you can drain that pit out mm -hmm. sort of if there's a yeah, yeah it's a containment in in some oh right it's oh, supposed yeah. to be a containment it doesn't have to be it it's only be water. water it's only right? water yeah so well, you can't you'll have a drain in place yeah well i think there's a trench drain across the garage as well yeah <laughs> yeah there's yeah, a trench drain separator. but we don't have yeah, we have to have an oil or water separator right. yeah. we also need storage because we don't have a municipal i can't dump that water into a leach field you can't? You can. No. Even if it's separate? No. Yeah, so it has to go to a tank. storage tank, which would have to get pumped out. This is the Jesus. state. You can wash it off out of the driveway. Yeah. Totally legal. Totally fine. Let yeah, it run off the driveway, you're okay. You wash it off in the shop and it goes yeah. through its back. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that, but that's, that's the way things roll. Uh, so. Um, huh. Uh, uh. Is, that, is that technical? What? 
Uh, uh. I'm just thinking it's, it's nothing I can get around. It's gonna go. No, I, I get yeah. it. I know all that. Um, I don't want to know all that. But <laughs> I've got the soft costs here. I don't have yeah. the total costs. Yeah, cost. Do you have a square foot of cost? We do, and I'm, I'll just pre-warn you, it's going to scare you. I, it, one of the, it's in one of those three if you want to hold it up. I thought it was, yeah. got pillows out here to put behind yeah. all yeah. of your chairs, so when you see the cost never you fall over backwards, you won't be looking at the compression. If the cost is, has to be presented to the townspeople, that's what I'm... Yeah. has a big, big impact on the Yeah, it does. So we've got both... We'll get into a lot of this language here later, but uh, the costs up here, we've got prefab mill building. Let me go through the options with you. So we have uh, a wood frame building is a more high performance building. And we've got three different wall and ceiling assemblies, which we can look at, which have generally equal energy properties in terms of air sealing and insulation value. However, some of them uh, have used less embodied carbon in their materials. So they don't have the fault, like the SIPS panel with all the, um, the petroleum-based insulation products. We can stay with those or we can go to look at lower, um, more clean, sustainable options than that. And they get more expensive. There's, there's a cost associated yeah. with that, yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, yeah. But really, that cost is actually very incremental, very oh, small in the overall, like, tenths of a percent. Oh, really? Um, where the costs change are really the different mechanical systems that we put into the building and how they operate over time. And Andy's going to get into that in a little bit more detail. But we're looking at the prefab metal with a propane boiler, kind of a um, standard system. You'd see at a lot of these different facilities has, uh, without soft costs, has a $3.9 million price tag. Uh, with the soft costs, it's about $4.7 million. Soft costs are the engineering fees, permitting, legal costs. You don't have land acquisition. I don't have the, we have the list of the soft costs. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so these are the soft costs. So there's the, here. A and E fees, the owner's rep, which is Mark. Uh, contingency, we've carried 6%, uh, which is pretty normal at this very early stage in the game. Uh, geotechnical work, which is the subsurface soil investigation that's needed. Uh, commissioning agent, which is having a testing agency come and look at the both the building envelope and the mechanical systems and inspecting them. Uh, the solar photovoltaics will be with the cost of the uh, with other energy costs here. Um, FF and E is, is equipment that they'll need within the building. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. Tell data, security, water and sewer impact fees. I'm not sure if there are any in East Montpelier. But would water fee be drilling a new well or? Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're not on a municipal system. Right. So we have zero, so that's a good start. Um, fire safety permit we'll have to do. Uh, legal expenses, if any, we've just got a small amount there. Testing and inspection for concrete testing and, and steel special inspections, if you choose to go that way. We've got artwork, signage, and then escalation is the cost to wait a year, basically. How much did you put in for escalation? I have 197000 I think it was at 4%. What was that again? Uh, escalation is the cost to wait a year. Uh, Price of stuff going on. Price of stuff going on. It's like inflation. It's like inflation. Inflation. Yep. Attention. Exactly. We don't know where that number uh, is, but obviously. we're in the ballpark, so it's a good idea to put it in there. Yeah. Yep. Um, so anyway, so with the soft cost, we're at 4.7 million. Um, oh, come on. It's at the top of the board. Yep. And then as we get into the different options, we look more closely at the wood building option. Um, so 3.99 million uh, with a propane boiler. Um, we're looking at air to water heat pumps. 
So this would utilize air source heat pumps to heat water. In all cases, we'll, we'll have a radiant floor in this building. So we're always talking, there's, there might be an air, air to air heat pump in the office administrative space. Yeah. But everything else would be a radiant floor heat water. application. Heat, heat, heat water. water, bulk water. Sorry. Yep. So it's either right. propane, pellet boiler, yeah. air source water heater. Uh, yeah, water. air source, air to water yeah. heat pumps yeah. or geothermal heat pumps. So, and then. Well, let me walk you through those. Yeah. Once you get down to the cost of walk you through some of those. Yeah, so we, we range anywhere from the 3.9 million to the 4.3 million, yeah. which I would consider kind of the premier cat's pajamas. And then that brings cost. your soft costs up accordingly. Those are pretty similar to all the way across, but it's about $5 million, $5.125 million um, all in for total project costs. So the prefab metal is the cheapest. It looks like here. Well, it is. Um, so you're about. But you'll hear some more in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. There's arguments for and against it. Yeah. That's that's a yeah. four that is a little bit cheaper. It's about eighty thousand dollars cheaper in the whole thing, whole scheme of things. Well, it's not, I'm looking. It's more like three hundred thousand cheaper. That's what I get. At. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about three point nine nine two. Or if you take the soft costs and oh yeah, yeah okay yep with soft costs yep anyway but I think what we'd like to do though is encourage you to look at what the long term life cycle costs of the the building are too oh so yeah we want to take that into consideration um, what's cheaper and easier to operate over the long term from a maintenance a building operation standpoint and replacement costs so you want to take it yeah so. Um, Thank you for, I'm on the energy committee in town, and thank you for saving me from working on the, on the energy section of the town plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But, uh, that's I've, the excuse. That's, 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 that's the excuse. Oh, dang. No, I, no, I'm almost done with this. <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody, too. You're almost done. Because <laughs> they're going to ask me, where's Andy? I'm like, he's ready. <laughs> so I work closely with the engineer, Dan, for first engine, engineering services of Vermont. Dan's a great engineer. He's up. Uh, He's a practical engineer, unlike some I work with. Um, and Dan has done a whole number of garages. Uh, he's done it for the state, for the OT. I think he's done three or four of those. He's done a couple of town garages. And he said, you want radiant floor in here. Mm -hmm. um, it melts off the trucks. It evaporates the water. And it also does something really interesting, which is kind of one of the big loads on these things is when Guthrie takes all six trucks and brings them back in covered with ice and water and sand, and um, that's a huge load. And the, traditionally, the way they used to do that is they had these big million BT uh, propane forced air modines and heat up the space. So what happens, what Dan has done in these uh, garages is um, he doesn't, doesn't need that because that radiant floor picks up the heat. It, all that cold air falls on the floor, the floor is hot, the floor is heats it up and it takes care of it. And uh, in terms of ventilation, what he's got, and, and it was so simple, I was kind of astounded. Um, basically, he's got an exhaust fan and an intake louver. And this is so big, there'd probably be a pair of, of those. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a sensor that looks at humidity, carbon monoxide, and um, VOCs, like um, you know fuel smell. If it sees any of those, boom, the fan goes on. And then uh, it brings that cold air across the floor and the floor warms it up. He, he also planned on a couple of radiant heaters on the ceiling as well. Um, so, so it's a pretty simple system that way. Um, and the radiant heaters in the ceiling are still just using hot water? On the hydronic, yeah. Water. Yep. Okay. Yep. And Same water, yeah. water right? Same water. Does that radiant heat on the ceiling? Uh, for some additional warming okay. up of trucks in the top. They're just units. They're not a plane. It's just yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious yeah. on why they'd be on the ceiling. Uh, but it's just radiant, additional radiant heat. energy goes all directions. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. radiant ceilings actually work. Okay. Uh, but um, It's just more hot air. Story. No, I understand. It's yeah. just counterintuitive. Okay. So Dan and I went back and forth and looked at various options. We did look at those. We looked at propane boiler, pellet boiler, 
air source, which is air to water heat pump, and then ground source heat pump. And uh, the way this is costed out is with boreholes. So a borehole is a 500 foot well, it's drilled, you put a U-tube of pipe down there, you fill it up with grout, and um, run water through there, and you capture heat from the ground. Sure. Um, and um, the air to water one pulls heat out of the air. And the ones that are out now, they like the cold climate heat pumps, the air to air ones that you're more used to, they will work down to 20 below. Um, and um, they will work to 20 They do. The problem is they're not as efficient right. at 20 below as the ground source one, because the ground source one is pulling heat from the, from the ground. Yeah. But you have to realize with the boreholes, you're pulling heat out of there all winter. The ground gets colder and colder and colder and colder. And in the depths of winter, that ground will be maybe freezing, maybe 25 degrees. It's, Even down that deep? Yeah, because you're pulling heat out. Because you're, you're taking heat out. out. You're yeah. pulling heat out. And it's a little bit of a wild card, because if there's groundwater right. flowing through there, yeah. you'll get, get the heat back. Heat. Yeah, right. You get more yeah. heat. You don't, but so you don't. actually deplete the heat. You do. Yeah. You do. Yep. And, um, and uh, buildings that have equal cooling loads and heating loads, they put it back in the summer and yeah. take it out in winter. Yep. We're, not, we're not cooling this building. Yep. So it takes a bigger borehole than it would for like... Uh, and, that, and that's down into the ledge, so you don't have to case it. There's 500 feet of well. Yeah. You have to case well. it. As long as it doesn't, you have to case it, right? Case it to get to the ledge. Yeah, yeah. Like, and a, it's a like a well. Right. Yep. Because it could collapse in, but probably doesn't. So what's done to, way. before we determine the exact number of wells, there's, you do one well and you do what's called a thermal conductivity test. Oh, yeah. And you find out how quickly yeah. the ground radiates heat towards that pipe. It's a 48-hour test, but it helps determine yeah, yeah. how effective right. that, that column will be yeah. uh, in the long run. There but as the winter goes, it gets colder. It's cold. It becomes less efficient as you go over time. Jeez. Yep. And then, and then when the summer comes, gradually it warms back up. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Um, there's yeah, another kind of winter. ground source heat pump. What's that? All for a short winter. Yeah. <laughs> Global warming, you know. Here we are. <laughs> the other kind of ground source heat pump is what's called open loop. And if you get a well that, if you drill, when you drill that first borehole, you check it for water flow. Like yeah. as if it were a water well, yeah. rather than a borehole. And if you get 40, 50 gallons a minute out of that, you can use that water and dump it back in a second well, a oh, re-injection right. well. Now you only get two wells instead of eight boreholes, which yeah. is what it'd be required. Well, you're going to hit water, probably. Pardon? You'll hit water, right? I yeah. Mean, 500 feet? You're going to hit water. You may not hit 40 GPM. Yeah, you got what? Rate? Oh, you need 40 gallons a well. it's yeah. some, it's not. I don't have the exact number. but I bet you do. I mean, we've got a lot of water around here. If we, I mean, we can have a geologist come in and look for that, but... Um, so anyway, there, anyway, but we figured it on the more expensive version, which is the boreholes, because okay. we didn't want to, you know, yeah, yeah. drill a drill well and not have any water. Yeah, we've got one deployment, 140. Yeah. 140 and it's not cased all the way to the ledge. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what it produces? No. No. Okay. It won't be much. So yes. I don't know if you're any of you are familiar with that logic, but it's the building near the whale's tails in Williston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. South Burlington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 140,000 square foot building. We had a dowser come in yeah. and we hit, we have two production wells. One of them, well, the combination of the two provides 700 gallons a minute. Mm -hmm. So it's an open well system. We take the, the water out of the ground. It doesn't reduce the temperature over time because it's a, That's it's, got, it's an aquifer. Aquifer, yeah. 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 The disadvantage well, then we just charge into four other wells back into the ground. So, because you got to check the water for water quality and grit, and if yep. there's a lot of grit in it, you got to have a filter in it. So, but anyway, you can. What we did the analysis on is based on the yeah. I Wish I had that on my farm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of water. It is. It's an amazing amount of water. Yeah. I mean, so, hopefully they'll never have to use that. At, at we drill 450 feet. We have 35 gallons a minute. Yeah. We wish we had more. We had a dowser come in too. Yeah. So we got 30 over there at the co-housing. 30 gallons. Yeah. Yeah. How many feet down? We went down 600, so we'd have some wow. storage. Oh, because wow. you had to prove that 30 gallons a minute for almost two hours yeah. for front really? dwellings. Wow. Um, okay. So, but the water anyway. came in. Not You didn't have to go that deep to get that much, but it gave us a whole bunch of storage. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So, Good. So um, huh. well, once, once we'd settled on what those mechanical systems are, yeah. the next thing I did is put up an energy model for it. And these energy models, they simulate the performance over every hour of the year, 8,760 8, hours. 
It looks at every hour, how cold it is, how much heat the building's going to take. Then I took that and I said, for um, this analysis for the heat pump options, the heat pump gets less efficient as it gets colder. So on every hour of the year, I calculated what the efficiency would be for the heat pump. Yeah. And then uh, looked at every hour what that would be. And if you look on here, yeah. uh, the blue line is the air source heat pump. Oh. Um, the, the air to water heat pump. So you can see it's peaking up around 35 kW, 30, 35 kW. Yeah. This is, this is, I'm going to let you in on a secret. This is the dirty little secret of electrification. You get peaks. You get big electric peaks. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you got to work against in the design. So on Washington Electric Co-op, it costs you nearly 20 bucks a kW. And it's a ratcheted rate, meaning if you hit that in one month, you pay up for 12 months. And the reason for that is they have to contract to have that power available for you. Oh. So, you know, that's, it's a legitimate thing. And, right. And it's what's called a demand rate. Um, so if you look... Uh, the hours across the bottoms are the months of the year. Oh. Uh, that's the hours. So, yes. uh, yes. Hour 4,000 is somewhere in the middle of the year. So if you're wondering what that means, 8760 is the whole year. That's December at the far right, and January 1st is at the far left. So so peak starts, yeah. Thank you. No, peak you. Right. In, in the winter. Yeah, the peaks, because yeah, yeah. I mean, if we had cooling, we'd, we'd yeah. see some peaks in the summer, right. but no cooling. And, and the little happens, bumps yeah. up and down all across the summer, that's the plug loads in the hot water. And okay. we talked, you got through that, how much water he uses for washing the trucks, and that's all figured in here. Um, huh. This 35 kW on the air to water heat pumps assumes we have some demand limiting. Um, and that takes a little bit of intelligence in the controls. And what we would do is store energy in those big uh, tanks that are for the sprinkler. Because we only need like 100 degree water to run that um, radiant floor on the coldest day of the year. Yeah. And most times it, it'll get by a 90 or even 80. Yeah. Um, so if we heat that, that those tanks up to 120, we can cruise through a demand period. But that's a little bit of fussing. The, the orange one is the ground source heat pump. And since it's, it's not working against 20 below in those coldest nights, it's only working against around freezing in the coldest time of the year. And so you see the orange lines, they're, they're peaking out in the 20 kilowatt range. So it's not even worth fussing with demand control on these. But if it turned out we had to, we could because we'd have that big storage tank. Mm -hmm. And probably we'd use that storage tank anyway because with the ground source heat pumps, you've got probably four five-ton heat pumps and they would just be heating that tank. That's all they'd know. Tank's not warm enough. Yeah. Heat the tank. Yeah. And they run full bore and heat the tank, pump the water out of the ground. Um, the, pumps are the, the pumps are the big deal on ground source heat pumps. Manufacturers, they show you, oh, gee, you get, five, you get five units of heat for every unit of electricity you put into this heat pump. Well, that's fine, but you've got to pump that water through mm -hmm. those boreholes. Mm -hmm. You've got to pump the water to the tank, and you've got to pump the water all the way out into the radiant floor. So every option here, I calculated the pumping energy, worked with Dan to get the pump size, calculated yeah. all the pumping energy. That's all included in here. Yeah. And when you include it in here, the coefficient of performance is around three for the heat pump, the ground source, and around a little over two for the air source. Uh, meaning you, you get, once you account for all that electricity, yeah. all the energy you put in, the pumps, the controls, and the heat pumps, yeah. you're getting three units of heat on average for every unit of electricity you put in. Okay. So if you looked at this heat load for, say, a boiler, it would be two, three times this tall. But of course, it's coming from a fuel. You don't have a demand charge for that. Um, so this is what I do with my desk. And then. So the, so the ground source heat pump is the most efficient? The ground source heat pump is by far the most efficient. Yeah, and so now if you look on here, the geothermal Yeah, yep. if you look on here, you can see the energy use right yep. here yep. Um, in the middle there. Yeah, and even the uh, the, the propane um, boiler and the uh, for either the wood frame or or the metal frame building still uses the building still uses electricity. You're gonna make. You're gonna, You've got plug loads, you can make hot water probably with it, although you probably make, no, I think that's actually from the boiler. And you can see the propane gallons. 
Mm -hmm. The metal building isn't as efficient. It uses more propane, yeah. 10,000 gallons instead of 7,000 for the efficient building. And by the way, I, I won't go into it here, but there's a, there's a table here that shows you how, how well insulated each of those buildings are. Yeah. And the wood building is, is very well insulated. Is that frame the two by sixes or what is it? It'll be larger because of the height. So oh, two by eight. Two by eight. Yeah. Oh, cool. Two yep. by eights, and probably have a three or four inches of continuous on the outside. On the outside. Oh, on the outside. Yep. Plus some insulation in the in yeah, yeah, in between. Yep. Yeah. And uh, R60 in the roof. So nice. A bunch of insulation. Nice. In well insulated. Yeah. So you can see the next one here is your first year energy cost right here. Um, yeah. The metal building, twenty four thousand. Yeah. The um, wood building with a propane boiler, 17. And I didn't show you the, I, I wanted to keep the number of numbers here down in pits. So I didn't put in the pellet boiler, but the yeah, operating cost is pretty similar to propane. To propane, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, and the emissions are actually higher on the pellets because it's wood, it's not yeah. clean. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is unfortunate, but that's what it is. Yeah. And then, um, um, without any photovoltaics, you'd have about a $14,000 cost to, per year, and I should say in the first year. And that's before the, the cost go up. That's for the air, so, air to water heat pump, yeah. and 12000 for the ground source. That's without, without solar panels. Yeah. And right. if you add solar, basically it comes down to your monthly charge on the bill. If you put, right. uh, if yeah. you put the um, enough solar on there to equal out the energy the building would use. Right. Yeah. Of course, and that's net metering, I assume. Yeah. Would have mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. 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 And the net meter rules, yeah. they keep chipping away at it. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you all about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My solar system has been in for 10 years, yeah. and now the return is like this. Yeah. Right. It was really good to start with. If they didn't lock you in on it, huh? You couldn't get locked in on the rate. For 10 years. And then that was it. Yeah. No, they didn't grandfather. No. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So. So, um, they keep chipping away at it, but the point is. The next thing I looked at was the 30 year carbon dioxide emissions for the two buildings. Yeah. And most of this is fuel. If you, if you want to dig into the footnotes, you can see how much is in the embodied energy and the, and the annual operating emissions. But it's pretty astonishing. The metal building, we're talking five and a half million pounds of carbon dioxide over 30 years. It's serious. Uh, the wood building, propane, almost four million. So it's it's a chunk yeah. less. Mm -hmm. And then um, electricity. We're on Washington Electric Co-op, um, which gets most of its electricity from the you know country landfill. Um, but I didn't I don't count that as zero because there's a lot of machinery that goes into that, and, and I counted it at 0.2 pounds of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. So ISO New England's somewhere around 0.8 or 0.9. You know, just general grid. Yeah. Photovoltaics is 0.1, um, oh. and that's the energy required to build and install and you know, and maintain the this, the solar electric system over 30 years. Um, so I think that's how I figured the carbon dioxide emissions. Um, Dan uh, Dupris ran the 30-year life cycle costs. So he looked at I think a 3% discount rate, and I can't remember what he used for fuel escalation. Might have been a similar amount and similar rate. And um, the reason this number is smaller than the first cost of purchase is he figured the building has, in year 30, has 75% of the value that it had in day one. Yeah. Um, so, so that's how we got that. that that's why that number's smaller yeah. than the initial cost. Yeah. yeah. And you can see the 30-year life cycle cost is pretty similar in all of these. It is. And actually, the heat pumps are a little bit lower. Um, so it costs less to own and operate the heat pump buildings than it does the fuel buildings. Um, oh. And then the last column is the federal incentives. So right. it used to be that it was just tax credits that you could get 30% um, on solar. So the IRA bill now will pay cash to uh, a municipalities and nonprofits. Oh, okay. Um, and they will pay 30% on the solar. Yeah. And they'll pay 40% on the ground source heat pump system. Oh, uh, it's 30% if you use foreign equipment. But in the, in the heat pump system, you can 
get American made of pretty much everything. Yeah. And so you get the full 40%. Solar, it's not, the American solar panels are so much more money, it's not worth it to get that extra yeah. 10%. Right, 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 right. So that, so that, that kind of, those numbers would come off of these cost numbers yeah. over here. Um, you know, out of $5 million, 300,000 isn't huge, but it's- It helps. I'll take it. It's, yeah. big, it's big enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it was interesting to look at that. And if you want to look at these um, graphs, um, I try to put these graphs in the tables because at some point somebody's going to want to look at those. Did you, did you get those? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this one is uh, construction with soft costs after the incentives. So the table here didn't have it after the incentive, but this one does. And you can see, I mean, they're all you know, yeah. kind of right up in the same ballpark. Um, purchased energy, if you have photovoltaics, which goes down near zero, yeah. versus propane for these two buildings. Yeah. 30 year carbon dioxide emissions, you can see, are just way down. Um, what is this one? The first year energy cost. So the metal building, the wood building, this is the wood building with the air source, air to water heat pumps, and with the ground heat pumps. And this is if you add the solar. The solar, to yep. Um, and then your 30 year life cycle cost, they're not all that different. No. You know, this one's a little lower. Um, is that figure, you have to replace those pumps? It's, yeah, it's replacement. Right. How often do you replace those? So pumps are figured at I think years? 10 years, and he figured he pumps at 15 years. Okay. Yeah. Because yep. uh, those pumps, the pumps will be working. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's, he's just good at including that all, in all of yeah. that stuff. So over 30 years, there would be two replacements yeah. of everything. What's the life cycle on the photovoltaic, Andy? Pardon me? What's the life cycle on the photovoltaic? 25 years. Uh, well, 30. You, 30. Get 30. you get 30. You get a 25 year warranty. So yeah. some people say. 25. Well, they drop an efficiency. Right. Yeah. Pardon me? They drop in efficiency. It'll die off. It's about a, the, 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 yeah. Now it's about a half a percent a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I figured that in here. Okay. So it's it's not a compounding half percent, but it's yeah. a kind of straight line yeah. half percent uh, each year that it, yeah. the output declines. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure he included the cost of inverters, but that ought to be in there at every 15 years. But I'm kind of disappearing yeah. the noise in here. So. These numbers are kind of all reflected in the graphs because I thought the, the graphs would be better when we go to show this to the public. And, um, it's just easier to easier to look at. But, but it's, still, it's, it's around five million. Yeah, that's, that's the rough yeah. we're starting. Yeah, yep. it's about five million. So this will all be on the quiz. What's that? This will all be on the quiz. The quiz. Yeah. <laughs> we'll memorize by the end of the year. Um, I guess the next thing we need. To just get the numbers with the bond, you know, with bond rates and everything else on what it would, what, what it would do to the grand list. I mean, what, See, what, what would it take for the taxes? Bond for twenty years. That's. I mean, whatever we. Yeah. That's, you know, that's that's that's. I the, would, that's, I that's we didn't go thirty years if you could. Well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what the interest is. is. The interest usually changes the longer you go. But, you know. Of course. Yeah. But we can look at it both ways, but. <clears throat> So a five million dollar building. If you can stretch it out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk yeah. about we'll talk about that. I'm not always in favor of stretching things out. Just to just to make it. Anyway, whatever. We need to get. Knowing. We need to see the and that's the numbers. Yeah, it's about seven cents on the tax rate. That's for you. Thirty thousand. Just, just off the top of your head. Yeah. Yeah. You can do some more figuring on it, but that's about what it's like. Actually, I think it's a great design. I love it. I like it. It's pretty you, straightforward. You like it. Um, I think it's going to meet your needs pretty well. I mean, yeah, it's good. speaking with Guthrie, yeah. Thank yeah. you for all your work on it. Yeah. I think the only yeah, sticking yeah, point is the cost. It is. Um, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's that's not, not something I haven't heard lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's crazy. Uh -huh. And are you guys happy with this? Oh, uh, I think the design is excellent. Uh, I mean, you're, you're here to protect us. Yes, I mean, I don't it's think that hard. Is, I wasn't scared by that number. I was yeah. hoping that you guys wouldn't fall out of your chairs, but that's yes. more in line with what I was expecting. I mean, from the first time when I saw it was 10,000 square foot building, you know, so yeah. it's going to be between four and five million dollars. And, 
and uh, I think it could be, you know, right in there. Uh, I don't know what your plan is now to take to the voters. Is it going to be like building A, B, or C? But this is a lot of information to understand, especially if you're just trying to check a voting box, yes or no. So. Yeah, I think we'll need to talk about we'll 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 too many about choices are going to be confusing. Yeah. But. I mean, the design is kind of, we kind of agree on design. I mean, I, I, I think that the ground source heat pumps are way to go. I mean, I, I, but I we can make that recommendation. The question is, what are you going to present to the to the voters okay. and whether you're going to say, here's four choices. That's well, the, that's I don't the know conversation. if we want to make the, have four choices. I don't, I don't think you want to do that, that. That's the conversation we need to have later. Right. Right? And we need to have that when we have all five of us. Right. Oh. We'll sell better too. You know, when we did the with the E32 expansion, we separated out the wood pellet boiler or the wood chip boiler out of there because people were worried about the total cost of the thing. Yeah. The wood chip boiler passed with more votes than the building passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it does tell a better story environmentally. So yeah, it does. The and wood frame right. building, the, the embodied carbon, the yeah, the energy usage, everything speaks. To yeah. high efficiency and, and performance. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, who, who do you guys? Who has experience with presenting this to the public? Have you? Yeah. So you presented okay, yeah. this. Yeah. They, uh, they signed on to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they made us engage. We no, have so to attend certain number of meetings. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yeah. To 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 yeah. explain to explain to the layman. I mean, this is. To me, this is yeah. pretty, this is pretty simple and easy to understand, yeah. and a clear yeah. choice. I think will probably come to a yep. pretty e easy choice. But you know, what we have to decide is when we're going to do it. Sure. Right. That's big. That's the biggest thing we've got to decide on. And you got to figure the you know, financial aspect of it. How much is it going to cost to borrow the money over well, some of the years? Yeah. And that's part of the discussion that you have with the presentation. Yeah. The um, so. we're not talking about. Doing this until the spring, correct? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I thought it was consideration for November, but no, oh, really. So you could. So you could. Uh -huh. I mean, that's. No, that's, we have to have the meetings or the presentation soon. Yeah. If you're going to start in November, that's that's my question. Well, that's yeah. Yeah. We'll have to so see. when you say start, you mean start? Uh, when did it break ground until? Break ground. ground. Yeah. Well, uh, they need uh, to start the public okay. information. Right. Of course, but you're not going to break ground until the spring. Yeah. Right. 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 Even if you pass in November on the right. first vote. You wouldn't break ground this right now. That's my question. So yeah. it's not like we're going to break yeah. ground in November and you have to have the meeting right. tomorrow. Yeah. Jen has made a cursory that's, that's schedule that she included in the packet that just talked about some of the milestones of this project. And one of the milestones is going to be the day we put it out to vote. So yeah. that's uh, huge. That's kind of what we're zeroing in on now. Dave and Andy, we either going to narrow the choices down to three or you know, from four to two, or if we're going to pick a high and a low option, or maybe a high, medium, and low, um, we can kind of put the numbers for, for, around for the, that. For the forum. For the forum, yes. I mean, uh, you know, I think, like you say, I think the picture remains the same in the floor plan. That all remains the same. The mechanical systems and the building envelope are going to change, and that's going to make the life cycle cost and the carbon emissions change. And that, those are the numbers that we're going to have to get the public to understand. So I, mean, I think it's critical that, in my opinion, that this comes to a vote in November. Yeah. Because well, that's when you've got your, that's when you have your audience. So that's good. Out. And now we can plan backwards from that date exactly. to say, yeah, we need to do this. So roll probably, out. And it's okay. especially we probably have to warn this that this is on the ballot like 45 days ahead of November. Yeah. I mean, to have to have a special meeting yeah. in yeah. September yeah. or December yeah. is, yeah. is yeah. kind of dumb. Especially it's the presidential election, so we're going to have a huge turnout. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, you know, all the, and all the legislators are up for... Yeah. Whenever I talk to anybody, they say, what's wrong with what we got? <laughs> so we, we need a good answer to that question. Yes. Or why can't we add an addition so on what they, we've got? Hey, well, obviously, never worked on garage, we have to do a tour. If you want to know what it's like, come by oh, Saturday from 2 oh, there to has 4. To be, there definitely has to be open house yeah. with, I, with all this stuff. Yep. <clears throat> Well, yeah. What you need to do is pack with equipment, then have them go in there. That's <laughs> yeah. what you got. Yeah. You put files and wings on. Yeah. yeah. People will be buying them. Yeah. You yeah. Can't no, yeah. That's what you should. Yeah. 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 
Would that be the idea to do the presentation at the town or after? Not at the garage, but offer an opportunity. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you couldn't it. do it there because you've got to do it at yeah. the elementary school because hopefully we might have 150 people. Okay. Yeah. But there needs to be a, an opportunity or two to yeah. see the garage yeah. if they want to show up. People well, you wouldn't do it the same work. day, would you? you no, just, of course you not. Know, you, no, you do it over the weekend, one, and, then yeah. one, and then you have a night or two. Yeah. At the elementary you need school. to offer them the opportunity to see what they're working on. The other thing is, how many presentations do we have? have? A little bit of photos and videos. Oh, that would be good. Is so it that could be a couple? Oh, yeah. I don't know. If, yeah. I don't know. It depends on your turnout. Turnouts in the town are very maybe high. offer two two different times. I mean, if you go like for town meeting, we have like eighty people, <clears throat> which is like three. But you have to offer it that they no, show no, up. I know that. Well, I said how many? So be twenty people showed up for that. I said how many? Yeah. How many presentations should we have? Oh. He said depends how many people show up. I said people don't attend very well. So but we can also but but with a virtual option. Right? True. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. helpful. Yeah. And then how do you warn people that we're going to have the meetings? I mean, that's the other thing. Send everybody a postcard. I mean, this is $5 million. And you you should send a postcard with a schedule. Down to I, would, I would think it's worth money well spent or something like this. I think it's It's like when you mail people a ballot, it works a lot better. Right. And this way, this is this is the open forum at the OK, so the, uh, we just got to decide the dates, what we're going to present, and we have to get some figures. So together. you're going to work something back maybe for the next few weeks and let us? Absolutely. If we know we want to go in November, We'll, uh, Dave and I will work back, on back uh, up the dates. backing the schedule out. Okay. And like I said, Jennifer had started one, and we can use that as a basis now. And that's a big milestone. And then once that is okay, he can start to build construction drawings. And, you know, that'll take four or five months, three months maybe. Three months. And, uh, and then we'll put it out to bid, like February, March, and start, and start construction. You know, late spring, early summer. So you got to sell it first. Yeah, depending on yeah. how the vote comes out. If it's yeah. if it's early November vote, if it's close, we might wait 30 days to start our construction documents. Just yeah. Because there could be a con contest or contested. Yeah. Uh, but so what, uh, what what's our what's our cost if the if it's a no vote? If it's a no vote, you've already got our right upfront costs. Oh, they're good. Yeah. We spent some extra yeah. money. It's twenty-seven now. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. You hold off for another year, you get to spend another $200,000. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says on the bottom of the price. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so, so we need all the cost on, 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 the, on the money part. So we'll do that. Uh, and we're going to have a we should put it on an agenda for the next meeting. Hopefully, there's more people on the spectrum here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we can do some figuring between now and then. Maybe. And have a kind of, um, yeah, have Michelle yeah. call yeah. up. Yeah. 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 Banks, yeah. especially Northfield, yeah. and find out what a five million dollar bond for. So, is there an opportunity for one of you guys that know a dowser to go up there and douse around to uh, give us a reading of the ground water system? Any any benefit to that? Because that's going to help you decide uh, ground source, yep. either even open loop or wells or you know. Um, so you just figure out can be pretty much anywhere. So that locals don't care. It's just if yeah. you if you want to get an open loop, yeah. and, and uh, I mean we've used geologists before too. Uh, Have you know, used really Lincoln, Lincoln Geotechnical? Steve Ravel is one guy that we've used. He for, did the on logic. For housing, yeah. yeah, he did South Burlington. Is he going to want to just drill one hole and he's going to tell you? Or no, he, he didn't drill any at all. He looks at geological maps. It was it was twenty five hundred bucks, and he looked at geological maps to determine where the water flows aquifer is, yeah. It was a little bit voodoo to me, but it worked. Like, we wanted to move the building 10 feet and told us not to, or we, yeah. I don't know, it was just. So what? that's just a way to refine the cost of the geothermal, right? Well, it's, yeah. it's a different system, though. If you go to, like, an aquifer type, yeah, approach, that's yeah. an open loop system, yeah. and right. yeah, there's different things to consider. But that just, it, it changes the cost of the of that aspect. It does. You got to drill the well though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, so that's why you just, why you just figure high on that. But you did. Yeah, we did. You figured eight holes. I think we're comfortable. Right. I think you just leave it at that. Yeah. And then maybe it's going to be a little cheaper because if you know, you know, know. our first hole in it and it's exactly water exactly. out the top. So so we we save some money, but I just figure high. That's, that, that's what we are. That's we're we're right. Right. Yeah. But I'm just pushing yeah. back against it. Yeah, I just if, if we don't want to do any preliminary tests and. 
you know, that would be the only concern is that if you use ground source and you got up there and the water was, uh, you would be in so you, trouble. If you're using ground source, you don't need you don't need a water, water source. Right. You just you're, need the heat of the ground. You're drilling eight holes. Yep. And say they produce 0.5 gallons a minute and but not. But they'd be able not, to. Uh, if the boreholes, you put a U YouTube down there, yeah. you're not using the ground water. You're not using yeah. ground water. Yeah. You're just using, cool. essentially, it's a big heat exchanger with the ground water. But you're still talking about a flow of water moving through the earth. No. No. So. No. You're not. I'm just talking about dry hole. So when we, using the water. when we do one well, we'll do a test well, and we'll do that thermal conductivity test. Right. And we'll see how much heat can be yeah. exchanged between the well casing and the ground, the surrounding yeah. ground. So what if that that test comes back while wow, this thing doesn't produce as much heat as we thought it would? I think what we that's, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah. It's and so of producing. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to say, you know, instead of eight, we need a sixteen. So that could happen. And no, the yes. eight is on the conservative side. He's yeah. not. He's yeah. not counting on any. I'll check with him, but I'm pretty sure he's not counting on any water flow through the region for the river right. because eight is a, that's a lot of. Work. Yeah. Yeah, that so was a wild card on that one. Though. They're just figuring high, and it could be it could be less. But who knows? You don't know until you start drilling. What Dave said though kind of triggered me. If that was twenty five hundred bucks. Even if it's a three thousand dollar investment now, that's cheaper than a half. Sure. That was to do an open. He was looking at open aquifer options. That's, yeah. that's once you got the gold drill. Still a capture. But the whole right. twenty five bucks a foot is that about right now? Twenty five. Yeah. Is that what the case? No, no, no. We didn't have like two and a half thousand bucks in drilling the hole to do the test. Yeah. Steve, uh, he was Steve Revell at. didn't do, he doesn't, he didn't do his maps. It's not based on the well. He, he looks right. at the geology of the land. That so seems like a really good investment to me. I thought it was. I mean, I feel it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's easy money. Yeah. But don't you think it's a little bit of a crap shoot? It's 100% totally. confident. I was not on board when he did it, but after the fact, I was like, I was okay. But you me leave the high cost in there. And That's what I did. Low. Yeah, high cost is fine. Well, we're, all, we're well, high cost might only be half too. Huh? That's what was also said. High cost might only be half. Yeah. The holes you need. Yeah. 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 Might be. Might not. Might. I mean, if you we just don't know until we don't know. No, no, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're good. You good? Absolutely. So we're gonna have the next meeting, we're gonna to try to hone in a little bit more yeah. on our options and we'll have some costs mm -hmm. for borrowing money. Michelle will get Michelle will get some Yep. Yeah. And then and then we'll be in touch yeah. to the next step. Okay. Okay. If you want me at that talk meeting, yes. yes. We'll update the schedule yeah, according I'd to like that to, uh, if you good. could. We'll you'll We'll look at the agenda. Yeah, and we'll try to maybe put this on the, the beginning of the agenda. I'm on the, I'm gone eight to the Oh, you're gone? Because our next meeting is far away. <laughs> What's our next meeting? It's the 15th, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 Andy's not here, but it, well, we want to. If Andy's not like, here, that's okay. I mean, we'd like to have you here, but. August uh, 8th, uh, August uh, 3rd, I think, is the next one. Next one. Okay. Or maybe they can be the at next, uh, I can be at the next one, but. Yeah. Do, they have, do they think they have to be here? I mean, we got all the information. I'm good with it. Yeah. So, I, I think really the finance part of it is the, the finance is important. We've got the options. Well, we need right. we we just we need to see. We the don't need you guys schedule. here for the next week. Right? The, yeah. the, 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 the timeline. Schedule, budget, and, uh, and the timeline. They okay. They're gonna figure that out from November backwards. Yeah. <laughs> and we are gonna get on board as quickly as possible with the options that we're gonna present. Yeah. That's all. And yeah. we know enough now, or I know enough now to present it to the other select board members that are going to be here. I think. I think we can do it. Okay. If you need us, let me know. We will be to attend. And I mean, you guys did a great job. And I mean, if you happen to be, instead of schlepping all the way over here, yeah. if, if you yeah. can be honest, yeah, and, yeah. Be honest yeah. 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 yeah, we have options. Right. And if, you're, totally yeah. if yeah. you can be online, if we have a question, yeah. Yeah. You don't have plan to, on that. If, if just plan on that, yeah. and we'll get the agenda. Yeah. So, Jen, you'll make sure they have the. And now we everybody have the Zoom link. That's yeah. And then if we have a yeah. question, you, you don't have to you know, yeah. consider home for Do we need the boundary line survey? That's one of the milestones from Chase and Chase. I want to look at a map. So I emailed the map. Oh, you did? Yeah. You did? The last week, yeah. The last week? Yeah. Yes. I can probably find it. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of emails I mean, in the office. Jennifer, I'm just going to leave these here. Okay. I mean, made, Thank you. If you want to talk to other select board guys. Do you have a hard copy of that boundary thing? Yeah, I can provide it to you after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at that. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Yep. Yeah. Really, um, it was a really nice design, and we'll see what we can do. I, that sounds great. Yeah. Right. You guys? Jenna, can you just send that to us real quick? You good? Or just just email it? How do you like how do you like the whole thing? I think it's well laid out. Yeah. It mimics George's new shop. Yeah. And but theirs is just monster. This yeah, this is huge. This is well, yeah, That's way longer. Yeah, 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 way longer. Two hundred and something people. Yeah. They and they have like an enclosed single bay for washing. Yeah. There's definitely have some bells and whistles on there that we did not add it. Yeah. But it's still adequate. Oh, yeah. I mean, compared to what you're dealing with, it looks obviously. like that you built it for expansion of equipment also. You could say that the roadside barn and the excavator aren't in there. They're parked on the outside of that building in that room. I think there's room to put the excavator in front of the grader, though, because the walk and roll will be off in the window. Yeah, I mean, we still have the option of the property here yeah. that we could do um, storage in the winter. Yeah. Then, so that's what I was thinking that we need to do with that site in the town. Or something. something. Yeah. Yeah, because we still have to store the sander, the tractor, and all that eventually. It's not going to be up there. It has to be here. So we could store some stuff here. Yeah. So anyway. Something else. Yeah. El Chipo and Symbol. Yeah. <laughs> Solid structure. Okay, what was the list? What was the list? Like what I do? Do? <laughs> six by six. Well, we, did you find it? No. What, what was the heading? Because I have probably like. Are you looking for the map? Boundary line survey map. Let me let me see. Yeah. yeah, yeah what does it say? Because I can all your emails. I can pull that up myself. Or I can. You can probably find it easier. Okay, because the. I don't know. To me, it would be easier to do the boundary line stuff after the fact, and unless there is I just don't know where the line is. So I, you know, oh, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, there's like a three-way pin right in the center of the sand. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. In the middle of the sand line? Well, there's no pin. But oh. Yeah, according to the map that I saw. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we can keep going in our meeting, and we'll find the map. Figure it out. So, is there anything else you want to go with? I think that was it for this. Uh, I should be still, schedule works in so I'll fill in the select board while well, we can do it right yeah. now. On the one that I thought on, you uh, wanted to see. Is this the one? Potential of yeah. uh, uh, looking at people, applicants. Oh, yeah, okay. So, that. So, you're saying the sand pile. Huh. So how would we adjust that? It looks like we're gonna to have to move it out away from the Sorry. Yeah. site. Because this is the boundary here. This this yeah. line's gonna go this way. Well in yeah. And then well, this line this is but see we all have like so we should just nine hundred ninety nine dollars <laughs> computer. So I think I think if you went from this for this potential without all the other stuff and went to an angle here. <laughs> if it was because <laughs> the sand file is gonna end up up here anyway. Yeah. But this this line And I bought it in New Hampshire too. Can. It's still um, <laughs> well, you don't pay sales okay. tax you don't pay sales tax. Because tenure. this is still part of your what? Yeah. in New Hampshire? No, 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 I'm just saying, so saying we don't pay sales tax. The town doesn't pay sales tax. Right? Yeah. Well, then if, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. If there's a new one. I mean, we don't really need to move it, actually. But, well, the greater drive, when you win the greater end, there'll be a block wall right there. So it's going to be a block wall? Yeah. It's to, to step it up behind the old firehouse. To bring so why, the why would we take, why do we need this line? I don't know. I think it was to separate these two. Yeah, but why do we want to separate that? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> why do we want to separate the town-owned fire department up there from the... Don't even garage? start. <laughs> <laughs> don't even start now. <laughs> My phone will be ringing off the hook. No, well... <laughs> just remove all the line. Yeah, yeah the that's what I think so. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. This line is through the middle of the sand pile. Right. This line is kind of on the 
footprint. So this line should be moved up. Well, did you mean the sign? Across like this or whatever. Right. So why do we have a line here? Because we because that was a separate parcel. Oh, it was? Yes. So this this was originally given by Alice Chapel okay. to build that fire house. Oh, okay. As I understand it, where the line is, see that was a lot bigger than what I was told. Yeah. Because I was told that it was only 28 feet on each side of the fire station and then went back well, behind the sand. They probably said it, that's fine and you went to the other side of where the transmission line is. I know the chapel line is way down. It's on the other side of the transmission line. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's what Where's the transmission line on here? That, that big right here? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. The chapel comes his line back to here somewhere. You know, further away. That's what Bruce comes. Okay. Well, he but would why, why wouldn't we want to blend this together? I mean, seriously. I mean, we don't need that to keep the separate person. Yeah, we do. What? Yeah, we do. <laughs> They own the land, isn't they, it? They own the land. Yeah, okay, there you go. That, so, that we can agree on. Some volunteer labor put up the building, so what? They put it up on town land, that's their problem. Whatever. I'm yeah. just saying it. If you guys came up and built a building in my land, I still own the land. Mm -hmm. I'll have my computer back. Yeah, so we haven't come to consensus on the boundary line adjustment. It doesn't have to be done before the building. I would say do it after the building is done. We don't have to, right? And then we can yeah. decide what we want to do then. Yeah. And yeah, because all three parcels the, really the footprint of the new building is yes. definitely on the. Oh, no question about it. Big deal. There's no, no yeah. issues. There's right. no issue there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If somebody will we'll hold off for it. Okay. And that seemed like a lot for to look at that with those boundary lines. I thought chasing chases How much did they was want? pretty high. Um, it was like $5,800. $6,500. Yeah. Okay. So I just had some survey done, and I think doing the adjustment and everything, I think yeah. the bill was three grand. Really? Yeah. Wow. So right. I just I just thought that was a little bit pricey for yeah. what they were going to do. Yeah. Do we get a computer with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's continue on the agenda. So we have someone here waiting to talk. To I'm ready. You're, okay. you're talking about boundary lines. We're not doing it. Well, I'm so sorry, but Jennifer asked about the boundary line, and I thought it was polite to answer, right? Thank you. I have courtesy in my DNA. Um, okay. So <laughs> I'll take that as the, I'll, take, I'll take that as in the front directly. Please, please duly note that in the minutes. Okay. Discussion on reconfiguration of schools, Chris. Where is it? I'm you so doing? sorry that you've had to wait so long. No, this was interesting. I like it. Yeah. You did a nice job. Nice presentation. Yeah, yeah it was a really nice. Board. I really like it. You got some inside. Andy did a lot of work. He's awesome. He does a lot of work. Wow. A lot, should, of we should, a lot of detail. Really and, impressive. And over time, yeah. We should really impressive. consider giving him like a, a raise or something. Maybe give him a raise. Some, some sort of service. Okay. Some, some sort of service. <laughs> no? Okay. Okay. So how are you doing? Yes. My Very name, well. My name is Chris McVeigh. Yeah, yeah, are you I, here on an official capacity or are you just, how are you doing this? Uh, it is kind of wondering about this. It is official. Uh, you know, I'm on the subcommittee for reconfiguration. Okay. And we're reaching out. You know, it's nothing official in terms of decision making. Yeah. Uh, but should we just? Because we don't really have much to do with schools. Um, you don't. But you know, we're, we're just trying to fill in, filling out all the different towns, um, including okay. the ones that, you know, pretend we. So we're doing this reconfiguration study, which potentially will result in school closures, potentially. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we're just trying to um, reach out to the select boards and see um, what you would like to hear from us for your town. Um, even though East Montpelier, at least the options that are being presented now, would not be a closing school, but it would be a receiving school. So you would be potentially receiving students from, from Cal's. Yep. Um, and you know that has its own ripple effects, because in, if we uh, voted to, um, the board voted to recommend school closures, then each of the towns where the schools are uh, located, they have to vote to say, we agree with you, we, we're voting to close the school. Um, that's the only way it can happen with the articles of agreement that we have now. Um, but if a town said, yes, we're going to close our school, 
Um, the receiving town, uh, there's, there's transition factors that we're going to take into account because we want to create an, basically a different identity for the school. Because instead of being East Montpelier School, it's going to be East Montpelier and Calus students together. And so, in order to, or it could be everyone. I mean, I went to the meeting last. I yeah. went to the meeting last week. I have, I have another question. But or it could be Berlin. Could be could have everyone. You know, pre K through first grade or something. Um, that was, that was or, or early, pre K and child care. Is, was one of those okay. one, one anyway. of the options. But anyway, wherever the, if there's a shift of students from one town to another, uh, we're talking about um, renaming schools as well. Um, and so we're just trying to, you know, it's, even though the larger impact would be on the school, on the town where the school is being closed, there's still an impact on a receiving town. Uh, and I, I live in Middlesex, so if, if both plans went through, you know, we'd be a receiving town as well. Um, and we're just kind of reaching out to the select board and see if you have any thoughts about what you would like to hear from us in terms of more specific information, um, in terms of what would be helpful to your town, really? I do have a question. And yeah. um, as I said, I went to the meeting. I was one of the 20 that- Did you go, go ahead, East Montpelier? I live in East, what? Did you go to the East Montpelier meeting? Yeah. I did. Thank you. Um, and I love Rumney. I substitute teach. I love Rumney. Um, the do question- you, Do you teach substitute teach there now? In Rumney? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, Thanks. I know every teacher and every kid. Yeah. Anyway, um, the question I had that wasn't, that wasn't answered was that if a town votes no on closing their school, mm -hmm. they can't close the school. Right. They have, the state can't, there's no override? The only override that can the state could override? Happen, no. So not, not as things are written. So obviously, I mean, they could override if they could take over school if they thought the school was uh, operating really poorly, but we're one district, and so they would have to be looking at the district as a whole. It wouldn't be, it's no longer individual town schools, it's all one district. Right, so and we have different schools within so Doty the district. Had, Doty had their, I'm sorry, this, Doty had their 100 or 120 people show up. Yeah. Obviously, they want to keep their school open. Yeah, I they do. vote no to close the school. Yeah. What do you send, one kid to the school? You still, you don't close? Uh, what, 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 no, you would, you would not be able to send just one kid, just because. I'm being facetious. No, no, I understand, I understand. But what happens? The, um, then the school would not close. What could happen is that there could be, the board could um, vote to add, change the articles of agreement. I mean, the articles of agreement are what control the school closure right now. Um, yeah. And so the board, the, uh, board could um, propose an article, change, uh, and have the school closure decision be being a district-wide decision as opposed to the oh, individual. Oh, it's kind of I, I agree with you, I agree. <laughs> uh, but, oh, wow. but that is an, a mechanism of, of addressing with, with that issue. Um, or the board just figures something else out in terms of trying to yeah, make it work. Yeah, I'm just thinking the, the turnout that, that Doty had yeah, was agree. very impressive. It obviously, I'm it's sorry. It's a big deal. It is a big, it's a huge deal. I mean, it I mean, changes the nature of a community once the school gets closed. It, well, that's why. Yeah. For any, any school, I mean, just. I know. That's why Cabot's kept this. I know. Yeah. When you it's socializing. With, it's, it's when you integrate make, kids from Berlin. The community. I know all the kids in Berlin, too. Yeah. It is a huge impact and changes in the the tone of the schools. Yeah. If you spent any time in Berlin, yeah. you'll know what I'm talking about. Huh? I, I guess so. Oh, I've, got, yeah. I've got a question, and it doesn't relate to the closure of schools. But sure. In my opinion, yeah. The problem is more on the legislative level, and let's face it, there is no more local control. With all the federal mandates, the state mandates, there's really no more local control. And we have too many districts with too many administrators. I mean, just administrative-wise, so when I went to U32, for example, I was in the first class that went all the way through. Yeah. And uh, there was two principals in that school, not four. Mm -hmm. There was 1,400 kids in the building half the size it is today. Right or wrong, it just, there's... Uh, top heavy. It, it's really top heavy. And every time that we talk about budgets going down, they talk about cutting education. 
that's not where you need to be cutting. It's the administrative level. Um, so, state of Massachusetts had three districts in the whole state. The whole state. Mm -hmm. And they have more students in one county than we do with the whole freaking state. And if you eliminated all those infrastructure, and I'm not saying go with one or three districts, but consolidate like the whole Central Vermont area into one district, for example. You know, I think, I think you're going to look at it, the economy to scale a whole lot different. That has to happen on the legislative level. And what I would like to see is the school boards put pressure on our legislators to really look at this hard. And I mean, they've known this has been an issue for years. And this has been brought up before, and they just pass over it. And as a lot of it is because the school boards don't get along. The school boards are certainly not behind a consolidation like that, as far as I know. Um, they are behind the legislature changing the funding formula uh, for school rather than relying on property taxes, which um, are difficult for a lot of people, especially as we age and have more fixed incomes and property taxes keep going up. Uh, the school board is definitely behind that. The Vermont School Board Association testified throughout the year, um, urging the legislature to address the funding mechanism, and they did. Um, you know, the yield bill this year, they included a provision for um, assigning a committee to really look at the, more deeply look at the funding mechanism, which is, but again, that's not something that's going to happen this year. It's still going to be over time, so you, you're still out looking a year or two or so. Uh, and and so the, and and we do talk about combining with uh, Montpelier and and sharing resources uh, and I'm sure that that would be part of our conversation over the next year or so and we've talked about trying to just share the administrative staff um, but if we do that we're really constituting a merger can't just do it like sharing resources because you're it, it would it would basically essentially be a merger of the two of the two districts, which may come to pass. I mean, we've talked about having the high school for both up on, at U32 and the middle school down in Montpelier, but now Montpelier is talking about a $110 million high school that why, why we would want to sign on to that. I do okay. know, you know, that's that my almost, individual that opinion. Right, right, right. Right. Which was very well right. done. That, right. that packet was very well done. Yeah, okay. Um, so, I, so we are just looking, do you have any sense as to what you would like from us in terms of the information, and, and we're still working through um, what the potential cost savings may be. Well, that, okay, I mean, so I, I have a couple of things to say. Yeah. First of all, when you're dealing with Vermont towns, every small town, every community in Vermont had their own school, they had their own emergency services, they were thriving communities. Mm -hmm. Now they're all bedroom communities because the nature of the communities has changed. And this is why we're at this crisis point where we have less students going to the schools, but also because the nature of the community is such, they're, they're, they're resistant to that. You know, I went to Cabot High School. I know they kept the Cabot School going, even when there's only 60 or 70 students in the high school. But because every small town is proud of the fact they have their school, they have their emergency services, they're independent. And that's why mergers are hard for them to do, which I understand completely. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering about the cost savings, which was my question was, there's got to be an efficiency factor here where it will cost less per pupil when you start merging those students into these schools that are half empty, half full. You, More you, students dilute the cost. Um, that is generally true, but it all depends on what you do. Um, because the primary cost for running the school is staff. Yeah. I mean, it's like 75, 80% of the cost. It's not really the buildings yeah. um, to maintain but, that. But, but you but have 20 what, kids in a school, in a class, or four, or whatever. I completely agree with you yeah. on that. But part of the presentation, there, there certainly would be certain cost savings, like we won't be maintaining a school that is closed. Yeah. You know, we don't have that, that physical cost there. Um, but if the, but, but really, but we're also, emphasizing that if we close schools and consolidate kids, uh, we'll also have greater opportunity to, to have more things like Spanish or, which, which or arts. Which you eliminated or the thing, Which we limit, yeah, I don't right. Know, right, right, right. Um, and so, or the arts, which have been cut back. And yeah. so you're adding in a cost, you know, oh, based, yeah. on, you know right. to, based on the consolidation. So yeah. it's really kind of, 
having a system where you're really going to uh, represent to the community that if, if we do this, this will be a solid cost savings. And what we're, we ask the administration to do is basically run a, a ghost budget for yeah. if there was consolidation. You're this right. is what we would really look at in terms of staffing uh, and other needs at the schools. And to your point, you, Tom? Tom. Yeah, Tom. Uh, the schools have been doing so much more over the years, uh, not just education-wise, but social services, uh, taking care of the kids, and those those are come out of the school budget. Those aren't separately funded by the legislature, and and we have and in terms of administration, and I think the, there's sometimes too much administration. But there are so many reporting things that we have to address oh, now that you didn't have in what was that 1979 when U32 was open? Oh no, no. So I, I 72. I oh, 72, I yeah. think, right? 71 is when 71, OK. And so, but, but what I'm talking about is the stuff that happens in the central office. Mm -hmm. There's no reason they can't have, you don't have to consolidate the schools or close the schools and think to have administration. You can have the administration in Waterbury somewhere and, and still run that administration throughout the whole central Vermont area, in my opinion. Uh, you know, with the age of computers and mm -hmm. Zoom, I mean, I mean, I have clients in Florida, Oklahoma, uh, Iowa, um, that I deal with all the time. And so if I can do it, <laughs> and I'm not, you know, the smartest guy in the book, there's, there's got to be ways of doing it. And, and there is, but we can't ignore the requirements that are imposed on us in terms of reporting requirements. And, and you know, schools, I mean, we have to take in all the kids that we have and we have to serve all their needs. Uh, and that is. But the administration is not the one doing it. That's, that's, no, I, I, that's my concern. Okay. I mean, but you're, then, not, you're not going to close the building. Right. right. You, the, need, you need to have a building. Yeah. You're not gonna and you need some it. administration. You, and you can, you're not you gotta have some as you, I know you recognize that. You're not going to close the administration that. building. Right. Um, Michael Dwayne brought up an interesting point. You know Michael? Yeah. Okay, so he brought up an interesting point the other day that for Act 46, he said, I'm very concerned that doing all of this, he said, Act 46 came in and we're going to save all this money and everything's going to be wonderful. And then when it didn't happen and they didn't save the money and the money wasn't being saved because of, for whatever reason, then they twisted and said, well, we're getting better education. That's why we enacted 46, uh, Act 46. Oh, so it didn't do the savings? According to Michael, not, no. And, and he's, he's right. And, and he's right. To so that, we'll, I never could see how I was going to say that. Was are we going yeah. through this and then? Yeah. Like I said, I think they're looking at the wrong place. Right. That's my personal. But, but, there's no but what you're talking school. about is not going to happen. There's there's no, it's not going to happen school. here. No. Like in right. Dallas, there's no students. Well, actually, but what's interesting is that Dallas and and Doty have been pretty steady in their populations. I mean, okay. they they dipped down, but they've been relatively oh, yeah. steady over the past couple of years. And Middlesex has, has gone down. Um, the projections are that East Montpelier will go down. down by to 30 or 40 students. I think over the next two or three years, um, but these, and, and some of these predictions have not come true, I mean, these, yeah. these projections, um, but some have. But some of the class sizes are, are they, fair. I agree. I mean, agree. There's, I, and there's a, as you know. I've been in four of the schools, and my wife's been in five of them. And, 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 and sometimes the class is too small for vigorous discussion. Which is, and, uh, which which is a problem. problem. Which, which they brought up could, could okay, So we need to flip it and change the zoning so we have more people moving in and cheapen the cost of land. Uh, I this do. is what we need to do. And that, not that close the school. Right. Get, the, get more people moving in. I'm not this. I'm They're not. leaving Vermont. How come? Okay. Let's, let's okay. stick to the topic. So wait a minute. I'm, we're, we're all in agreement. <laughs> we are. <laughs> well, most of us, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, I mean, you're asking what. What, what, what I, 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 think, like I, think, from us. I think the impact, you've got a bunch of, you've got a bunch of plans. What yeah. is the impact from a student perspective? Um, bringing kids from different schools to di to other schools mm -hmm. will have a major impact on a, from a behavioral to a um, the ethos of the school. How are they going to know that? I, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I know every school, and the schools are very, very different. They are. They are. Yeah. Also, the in these regions of the towns are different. Right. That's in, why. In, in, Right. Yeah. No, but it's there's socioeconomic. There's, there's, yeah. there's education the level. Population. There's. Right. It's not as clearly defined on what. I mean, you've said that okay, you're going to have a nurse in every school. Um, what is the arts going to look like? It's kind of nebulous. Are you going to have French and Spanish in every school by doing this? Are you not? You, you're saying that we can bring back the arts or we can enhance that. What is it, something clear, more clearly defined than, okay, we're going to have a richer education? What does that so, mean? So you're looking for a more concrete plan than a oh. whole? Yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, I, it's quite, it's, it's, it's nebulous. And the other thing, I mean, you'll go through, um, you know, the World Cafe, the, the cafe that we did. You've got one sentence, one of those 25 or whatever it is lines of the cost savings. That's, that's, that's nonsense. That. It I, needs to be really... A world, if you're talking about money, you had one sentence, you're saving 338000 or whatever. Where, where is the real cost savings? Um, you, you, need, you need to much more clearly define that and, and, have, um, and have much more detail on the cost savings. Because yep. that was one of the things that was put up. And I would hope if you're closing two buildings, you would save more than $300,000. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, just... Again, I, I'm, I'm just walking depends on what happens with personnel. If personnel remains the same, then there's not much savings. Personnel needs to go down in order for there to be significant cost savings. Right. Uh, and then, but then you also have, for how long? I mean, is it sustainable over time? I mean, that's the other thing that we need to work on and present a viable picture of what that would look like. First, of what the initial savings might be, uh, or should be, I mean, and be very representative about that, uh, and also be very representative about if we think we're going to add um, um, opportunities in, like arts, Spanish, or whatever, world language. It might be more powerful. Be very, very, well, but be specific about it. Exactly. Not say, we may be doing this, but saying this is what we will do. Exactly. Right. Okay. okay, so I got a question. Yeah, just one. So, oh, say Cal, Cal's closes. <laughs> just say Cal's closes. Yeah. And those kids come here. Yeah. And then they're going to tuition. They have to pay no, tuition. No, no, no. It's all one district. It's one district. It's all one district. district. But, but yeah. what about the taxes, John? They, they still we pay, pay taxes. taxes. They, everyone will still pay taxes. Yeah, but will their tax bill go down? No, we, we, we voted on a on a whole, the district voted. Right. The town, at least, we, we, we voted on on the school bill on a, on a grand basis, all five towns, yeah, correct? That's right. Right. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. So that well, cost, it wasn't really oh, oh, that's right. And right, we, right. We had no control. So the cost has already been spread out. It's been spread out. Everyone. Everyone. Oh, so like, well, so that should go down. What? Supposedly. Well, that's like, cost. The tax, yeah, I know. But I'm trying to find well, out what. Well, you know, it, 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 so he's saying. You would think it would, but yeah. we don't have control taxes locally. We control spending. Um, but the tax, I mean, Tom, you talked before about local control. Um, there are different towns, like, and this, this really came to pass this year uh, when the legislature uh, had um, basically put a 5% cap on tax increases, and some towns, um, well, some districts overspent, thinking that, oh, our tax is going to be capped. And they ended up very drastically that eliminating that. That was crazy. Early, I mean, it was a, an abuse. So a fortune. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, but even as it is now, uh, the towns pass their budget, and that goes into a general pot, and it's funded through the state. Yeah. And so, so, what left? so local control is yeah. asserted that way, um, yeah. because you're you know, if you're passing your budget, you're controlling yeah. that. Right. Uh, but you're not you're not necessarily paying for that budget all on your own. That's a share. If we, right. had, if we had another 500 kids in this district, we'd be in great shape. You would. Because, because we get so much more money. Right. 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 Yeah, it's per pupil. Does anybody right. have any questions that, not, we're not asking for the answers to questions, but information that information we think that you would that like to see town. that would be helpful. I, I want to see the number breakdown. Like, and we okay. also want to see the what financial punch. You 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 want to maybe put early child learning here, and maybe this year, maybe a little more detail about what the what the options are. Do you if you close Doty and you close Callis, um, so what is the class size is going to be? Where what's do you are you going to take? 
Are you going to take um, Rumney and you're just going to have, you know, fourth and fifth and sixth graders? I'm just, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but there needs to be more detail. So there is some discussion also um, about moving sixth graders um, Whatever. to U33. What, 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 um, yeah, right. Okay, but whatever those details, you want more details on that? And we had, we had a woman, my neighbor on North Street, that was, she had a prepared speech. It wasn't necessary because we had to ask questions now. But she she said my kid would be it would be a disaster if you sent my child a year earlier to the middle school. You've got to talk about what the psychological thing. Some kids are ready in fourth grade to go to the middle school. This 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 woman um, she's terrified, and her kid would not be ready to go to um, to go to the middle school for sixth grade. How are you going to do that? You're going to segregate. You're going to would it be the sixth graders would be coddled a little more, or just saying this was a concern? And you, I guess, as a board member, you'll read all this stuff. Yeah, she was terrified. Okay, and and there's been mixed bags. And I I spoke with someone the other day who said the same yeah. thing. The sixth graders not necessarily as ready so as we socially see them to be. Yeah. Okay, so one more thing before we end the discussion. Sure. All the points that you've made. Are these things you're going to present at a forum on the school board? So we, the next meeting, next next meeting. not necessarily has to come to the site board. No. no. It has to go out to the general public. Yeah, we're reaching out to Yeah, you're reaching this, out. This is right yeah. here on my because because you came. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying to the next level, the concerns that we raise. There's a meeting at 6.30 tomorrow online. Well, but, that, but that is a, for folks who couldn't get to the other forum. Oh, okay. Um, but then we're going to have another presentation. Okay. We'll collate the information that we have. And yeah. my hope is that we have multiple additional forums because of the significance of the issue. Uh, yeah. And especially yeah. for town. Maybe you have something in, in the auditorium in U32. You know what? It's, a, 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 people don't travel. I mean, it's amazing how. Or, I mean, it, or also virtual, do it virtual. Or, or, do it, or do a virtual. And you know what? That has been a boon to attendance. It and really you, has been. In East Montpelier, there was, there was no virtual. Uh, there wasn't. Oh, you know, and there wasn't, there wasn't anywhere. Because I, I went, I went, we. Okay, we're actually doing some connections. Uh, I said, you know, I'm tired. I don't really feel like going. So I said, well, I'm going anyway. She would have watched it from home. She would have been able to interact or do stuff and chat. Yeah. We didn't have that availability. We didn't smoke very well the other day. We usually try to make that work, but we did not have forms. There's so, another, that's, that's a great idea. Okay. okay, so there's going to be another form. What? There's going to be another form. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Sounds good. good. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. I really appreciate your time. No, no, I mean, it was the other thank presentation, you. too. What? Thank you, for thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very thank you, much. No, thank you for coming in. It was yeah. very informational. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah, thank I understand you. a lot. Thank you. It's better than I did. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck. you both. Yeah. See you later. We'll All some, right. How about we do this with the garage? We'll do a school, the school vote with the garage. Oh, really? <laughs> see you, guys. See you later. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Talk to you. All right. Blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 it's just Again, I don't think there's much left. There is, what was the plan B I wrote down here? So that's Sanders Circle? Oh, Sanders um, Circle, yeah. Is there a personnel matter? No. Um, no. That was the interview, but we're rescheduling okay, that. Okay, because you had two, that was two executive sessions on, on the agenda. At the beginning, right. at 640, yeah. and at 830. That was the They're same thing. The same? Well, yeah, the when same you have time. an interview, then you discuss. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Right. I mean, you're always right, but I'm just emphasizing it. Well, I'm, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, so what's plan B? Was the Santa Circle thing? So it was to get a temporary bridge. It seemed pretty cheap. And put it in in July. It and Guthrie's team is ready to do it second week in July for 3440 That was crazy. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it, but yeah, she sent it to me. It made sense. She sent yeah. that. She sent that around last week. It was nuts. Three thousand. And then when when would the job be done as far as getting the culvert in and all that? Not till all so that would be the Oh, not till spring. Right. All depends on the permits. Yeah. But three thousand dollars. They have right away issues, as I understand it. Too. What's that? They have right away issues too. They oh. got to get so. Yeah. Then we'll find yeah, what was going to happen this year. It's not going to happen this year. Yeah, so I asked Brian Lane Carnage from DeWolf, and he suggested putting in the temporary solution. Okay. Because he didn't think that we could get it in. Um, I spoke to somebody recently. Now, would that be reimbursed time. by FEMA? 
Um, I haven't discussed plan B with FEMA yet. Okay, because that would be... We were trying to make plan A work. <laughs> plan A was get it done. Right. Yeah. And somebody, somebody I spoke to was really upset that you know, this is not going to happen for another year. Or yeah, no, I, I agree with that. This, this is... So plan B sounds like a good idea, but I would like to know if FEMA was going to reimburse us for the expense, expenses involved. I can ask that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Or is there, would there be state money for that, too? Anyway. Well, if he's going to do it the second week in July, we would have to make a decision time. Well, let's so this do it. I, I, I don't see any downside. But I don't either. It would be nice to get reimbursed, but we can do it anyway. It's not that much regardless, money. we would. Yeah, like regardless, we do it anyway, and we'll see if we can get reimbursed. Either state money or see if we can call somebody and see what they can help us out with it. I'll make a motion to um, approve um, yeah, expen to approve the expenditure with looking into other funding for where? the temporary bridge. Hmm? Expenditure where? For the temporary bridge. Where? Sanders Circle. Sanders Circle. That needs to be part of the motion. Well, just in case my street washes out, my driveway, I want to put it on 2905. <laughs> let's get specific. Yeah. And I like okay. that. I get like they're regraded. So okay, because no one's taking the minutes, so somebody's going to have to take the minutes off the tape. Right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> call, call me up. Okay, send your circle. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Second. Chairman. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Good to have they do have it. And I had road stuff written down here. What was that? Um, Town Hill. Um, oh, right. So we had Pike Industries put together the RFP draft, and I have it in your packet. And um, I just wanted to get what the timeline was for that project. Initially, the quote was 288K. It's to pave Town Hill Road. So now we have the RFP put together, but when do we want to put it out to bid? Is the question. Okay, so we got oh, here we go. Did they give us? Or did it? Oh. I thought they did. I have to look into that. So we have a paving grant. Should we help? We applied for it. I, I, I thought you sent me an email and we did get it. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Okay. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could have sworn that came in last week. The grant. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had a different grant for the grants in aid for 37K. Right, so that's, that's, that's a different. That's yeah, a that's different two one. different projects. This is a paving grant. Okay. Yeah, specific to specific to paving Town Hill. Right. Okay. But, okay. Throw them in the pile. I have to look into that and get back to you. I'm pretty sure we got it because I remember seeing the email. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. It was, but you don't remember how much it was. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So the question is do you want to know if we should put this out for a bit? Because didn't we have Pike give us a number? Yes, yeah, so they quoted us to 88K. Yes. And our paving grant was significant, as I remember. It would offset that by a lot. Yeah, it was 200 and something. That's what I thought. 218, if my memory yeah. serves me correctly. They've usually been in the 150 range. Right. It, it was, was a little high. higher than I thought it would be. What's that? It was a little higher than I thought it was going to yeah. be. Yeah. Um, but we're going to pave it anyway. Right. We have money in our capital budget to right. do this. So now, when we put it out to bid before, we did have another place come in that was lower for paving than Pike, and we used the other paving company. Um, so I guess it doesn't hurt to put it out to bid. We don't have to stick with Pike. But generally, we've 
have good results with Pike. Um, but the bidding process, we have to do it anyway. So we should put it out to bid. Wouldn't hurt, right? Oh, I think we need to put it out to bid. Yeah. We just may need to make sure that they stick to the same specs. Well, uh, right. So well, we do the specs are here. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Average width, additional work, this whole uh, plate existing payment, which means grinding it off, so it's flat. Three quarter inch and an inch and a half for two and a quarter. Yep. yep. So let's put it up a bit. What date? What's that? When's the due date for the bids? Um, how often do we usually do it? I mean, a couple weeks? Or by our next meeting, if you put it right out? Can we do it that way, or is that too quick? Yeah, I think we could. It gives people two weeks, or maybe we should give them four. Know how to put well, we should put it at our, our meeting in August. We might, well, yeah, I guess that would work. We just got to make sure it's done, we get the bid pretty quickly because we don't want it to go out in the fall. Okay. Paving does not work in the fall. No. It gets too cold. Is that quick enough to turn around two weeks for a bid? Two weeks should be okay. I don't know how the process. Oh, it was, it was Whitcomb was the other company that bid on it. I was just going to say, Whitcomb, Whitcomb. was the other one. We used Whitcomb before. It was okay. They're both, they're both good companies. Yeah. They had to buy the stuff from Pike because I think Pike owns all the... <laughs> the major. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Um, I wouldn't mind it sooner than later. I wouldn't mind if we could get the bids by our next meeting, if we could. Okay. If possible, if not, delay it. But, right. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what we get. Sounds good. Okay. And so the interlocal agreements in here? I see that. Yep. So there's a draft EMFD agreement that came from Jim Barlow. Okay, that's probably in your, um, your town administrative report, right? Um, yep. Okay, we should go over that now. So we went over the Sanders Circle timeline and the town administrator report. And uh, the other question last meeting you asked were, was what projects are we going to do with the grants and aid grant for 37K? So Guthrie and Ashley went out and looked at some of the roads that were high priority. And um, we're going to do Brazier Road. Um, and that should take two weeks in July and uh, that will cover 22K. And then the rest after that project, he'll work on Horn of the Moon, cross culvert near Frank's Farm. So those are the two projects for the grants need money. Um, we did have a road closure because there's a sinkhole at Center Road being fixed this week, July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We updated the emergency preparedness website. Um, today, uh, the education tax rate went up and the town tax rate went down. Um, and also for, uh, there's a 90 million FEMA money um, and uh, Guthrie said uh, we could two do two different projects for that. Horn of the Moon, Sanders Circle, Mallory Brook intersection downstream. He estimated that's a 200K project and a study to upsize culverts. And then there's also preventing a house on Center Road from flooding. Flooding That would be around a 200K project. So those are the two he identified for that. So that's an application we're going to do, the hazard mitigation application. Um, yeah, that's, we could do that yeah. if, if you're yeah. okay with that. Yeah. If you have time to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have a personnel matter. No. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. If he's up. Um, well, I did want to put you in. That I'm we, sorry. I, I we will. Motion. Um, Thank you. We're down somebody on the road crew, one person down.
So we're going to be doing some interviewing the R3 and I. Okay. Yep. Because we do have someone that's going to retire in the spring, and we also have a person now with, with uh, illness for yeah. an extended period of time. So okay. we're going to do some applications. We've got some applications. Oh, you do? Yeah. So we're going to do some interviews. Okay, in thanks for a couple of weeks. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, we're just going to do it up at the town garage, Catherine and myself. Good. Thanks yeah. for that heads up. Yep. So I'll let you know how that turns out. Okay. And I think that's it. You're going to be doing that before the next meeting? Within the um, let's see. Guthrie's gone next week, uh, and we won't be doing it before the meeting, right? You will not. Will not, no. I don't think so. It, 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 maybe on the Monday, because it is a Monday, we might do an interview that, that morning. Because um, I'm okay. kind of this morning. morning. So it's going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, but Guthrie's out next week. I'm really busy this week. So. Okay, thanks for doing that. Yeah. So just right, want to know that that's yes. going to be happening. All right. And we'll stand by for the to hear about. And the other thing is, um, I'm signing up for the alert system. And once we do that, Toby is um, working with us to get um, households signed up so that when there's an alert, like a road like, 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 yeah, but we'll get those we'll in East Montpelier Great. for roads being closed and this and that. So it's a really good system. And I'm very, signing, very signing up for that as the emergency director and then um, well, working with Toby to get everyone signed up. And we're going to have a public, you know, campaign to get on front porch form, whatever, so people can sign up for the you know, Vermont alert. So that's that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. So we're trying to get um, beefed up a little bit better in our emergency situation because it didn't go that <laughs> that well last time. No. So but that's so we need to improve that, and we're working with Toby. Because it wasn't organized. You know. Well, you know, I think we're, you we're learning, you know. I think you have anticipated that. Yeah, yeah. Didn't. Didn't know that. Of course. Yeah. So, so we're going to be in better shape. Right. I'm pretty right. excited about that. Yeah, the stuff in the state works really well. It does. Uh, we get, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tornado gonna, tornado yeah, warnings. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we all do. It's great. So we'll be, we'll be as a town, we'll be in that system, and we're not right now. Cool. So. I know Calus is in there. Calus is in there. Cabot's in there. Lots of towns are. We just haven't done it. So I got the paperwork. Okay. Fill it up. Okay. I think that's it. Yes, sir. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. There will be no discussion. <laughs> aye. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was um, Tim's trip to Boston. They